Hey guys, welcome back to some more pregnancy content. I'm so excited to be filming all this. Uh, okay, we need to wrap up my first trimester because I have moved into my second trimester. Today I'm actually 17 weeks. Yay! Um, Jojo's going to join us today. How cute is he? Hi, Joseph. Hi, little baby Kiki. Um, okay, so I want to talk to you about a few different things today. We're going to talk about first trimester symptoms. We're going to talk about symptoms I didn't have. Um, I'm going to talk about some items that have come in super key for maternity for me. And I'd love to hear from you guys because I have been so mother effing busy that I really haven't had a whole lot of time to buy stuff, which is why I'm in PJs right now. Like I don't fit in anything right now, but I haven't bought like maternity clothes yet because my belly hasn't popped. So <laughs> We will move right into it. I wanted to thank you guys so much for all of the kind words and sweet messages and DMs and comments. Like I see you guys and I read them and I just wanted to say thank you so much. It's been like so comforting and like so heartwarming to like have you guys be a part of this process with me and like that you're excited to be a part of the process with me. So it's very, very exciting. So I wanted to thank you so much for that. And I just feel like really blessed and touched and I'm excited to just continue on the journey. Like it's gone by so fast it feels like because I didn't really realize that I was still pregnant until 10 weeks. So it just feels like it's kind of flown by in a way. Um, the lighting's gonna be changing a little bit. I'm relying on mostly natural lighting and I'm so bummed. I had these like cute Christmas lights up and I had them on and unfortunately when I film, they blink like that even though they're totally not blinking like in person when they're on. So unfortunately we don't have any Christmas lights, sad day. So um, yeah, the lighting is rapidly changing in here. So this is gonna be interesting. <laughs> the sun sets so freaking early now, I can't stand it. So I watched a few videos that were like first trimester wrap ups because obviously I'm pregnant and going through this and I wanted to know what to expect maybe. And like also wanted to get organized for this video so that I could have it as organized and whatever as possible. That's not really my style, but I thought I would try anyway. And, um, you know, the thing is like everybody's body is totally different and everything that you, like every pregnancy I hear is very different from the last. So it's just kind of one of those things that you have to experience yourself. So of course, don't take like anything you hear in this video is just my experience and what I'm going through and what symptoms I have and stuff. So definitely keep that in mind. The lighting is just sucking in here today. Sorry, but I waited a little too long. I had a whole lot of stuff happen today and I didn't get to this till now, but okay. So let's start kind of like, like how I knew I was pregnant. So if you don't know, I have been through two miscarriages now and I've got videos on everything. So if you've missed those, like some people are commenting on Instagram, they're like, where have I been? Like I had no idea that you were even pregnant or let alone had miscarriages. So I've had two, I have videos on those. Those were very difficult to go through. They're very hard. So if you are, you know, going through something like that yourself, I highly recommend watching. Um, also because in my, the last video I uploaded about losing the twin, like just, you just need a second opinion. So it was really like heartwarming to read all of those comments. So thank you for that. It sounds like I'm not alone and like so many people went through a very similar thing or your mom did. So I really appreciate you guys sharing your stories on that. That was like really nice and comforting to read. So when I was trying to get pregnant after my first miscarriage, I was using the ovulation strips and these pregnancy strips from Amazon. And I'll link you to everything that I talk about in this video in the description box below. So you can check that and kind of grab whatever you need to. But I was using those and I was having a couple symptoms that I had in the very beginning of my last pregnancy. So I kind of felt like I might have been pregnant. So I did a, a pregnancy strip and it had the faintest pink line. And I was like, okay, so am I pregnant then or not? Because it's so faint that I just have no idea. So I sent it to my mom and she was like, she couldn't tell either. She was just like, I don't, I don't really know. Like, why don't you just wait? And I'm like, wait, like, I need to know, like, <laughs> I'm curious. Like I ha dying to know, you know? 
So I did it again like a week later and it was like way more of a stronger pink line. I had also been testing my HCG levels every single day in the morning and documenting those. There's an app like you can take a picture of the thing and it kind of tells you like when you're ovulating, but I also read when you're in the beginning stages of your pregnancy, I don't know if it's throughout or just then, probably the whole thing, but your HCG levels are higher and they kind of stay higher. And so for a few days they had been kind of high. So I was getting pretty excited and I was like, oh my gosh, maybe I'm pregnant. And then I took the other test where it had the pink strip. And then I was like, okay, I'm gonna take one of the tests that says like, not pregnant, pregnant. So I took one of those and I was pregnant. So I was about five weeks at this point and that's kind of when I found out. So I found out super early and finding out so early was kind of, it tormented me a little bit because going through a miscarriage, I was so worried that it was going to happen again that I was just so paranoid. Like I would take a flashlight with me to the bathroom at night when I would go pee because I wanted to look in the toilet to make sure there was no blood or anything of the sort. So that was kind of like a traumatizing experience because in so many ways, but like it just trickled on into the next pregnancy, this pregnancy, because I was just so worried. So I was very happy to get out of my first trimester and I'm currently 17 weeks today. So we are in the safe zone of my pregnancy and I have been now for about four weeks. So thank goodness, I'm very grateful for that and it feels good to like just be able to relax a little bit more and enjoy it a little bit more. So yeah, it's good. Some of the symptoms that I had where I was kind of like, okay, am I pregnant is kind of, I had acne on my face and a little bit on my chest and just little tiny ones, which I don't really ever get acne unless it's around my period, which I haven't had for a very long time, which is awesome. <laughs> so I was getting like pimples and breaking out on my skin and on my chest. And I also had like the foulest smelling gas. And that is just like a special brand of like pregnancy gas. Like, I don't know what it is, but it ha it's like got its own smell. And so I was like, that smells like it did last time when I was pregnant. And so those were kind of the two main things. And I also had to pee all the freaking time. So those were kind of the things where I was like, I feel like I'm probably pregnant, but I didn't know if it was like when you buy a new car, you see that car everywhere. I was like, I don't know if this is just me imagining things or what until I got that positive pregnancy test. I have my other symptoms on my phone that I'm gonna be reading because I filmed this before and after I was done filming, I was like, I forgot like five of the symptoms. So I've made a list. We're just gonna go down that list. I had the symptom of losing my breath. So you'll notice it and probably have noticed it while I'm like talking in the videos or my clips, like I lose my breath like fairly quickly. And so it's, it's kind of obnoxious, but I have to stop talking and take a breath. <laughs> um, discharge has been something that has gotten a little more ramped up at the end of the second or the first trimester into the second trimester. And that was always a little bit freaky for me because um, I did have a miscarriage uh, with this pregnancy and I lost a twin. And I kind of talked about that in the last video um, about losing a twin. It's called like losing a twin, I think it's called, but I can link it for you guys below. So I had residual like leftover, like old blood coming out and discharge. And sometimes when I peed from that, and so it was a little freaky for me, but I tried to like remind myself like it's not new blood, it's old blood, like look at the color. So that is something that I had experienced and discharge has just continued on into the second trimester. Lower back pain is something that I have had. It kind of has disappeared for a little bit right now, but still had a lot of that in the first trimester. I had this weird thing where I like to sleep in, like I get tired early and that's been a, a, a symptom as well, but like I was already like that before I was pregnant. So now it's like tenfold, like I'm an introverted type person in the sense that I'm not shy, but when I'm out and I'm like engaging with people in social settings, 
whether it's like just like dinner with friends or whatever, that draws my energy out and I just get tired and exhausted and like mm, my battery levels are like really low. So like when I'm out after about like two and a half hours, I pretty much like have to go home and recharge my batteries because I'm just like wiped. I don't, I wish I wasn't like that. It's made like my social life that much harder. Cause even when I was in my early twenties, like people would just be raging until like midnight and I'm like, I am so tired. Like I've got to go. But so with that being said, I've always gotten tired early, but I started waking up at like 6.30 or 7 a.m. every single day, which isn't really like me. I'm not really a morning person or an early riser. Like I will typically get up around eight o'clock um, and I hate getting up early, like almost more than anything else in the world. Like when I have to get up early for a flight or something, it's like the end of the world. Like when I used to have a normal job that I'd have to get up, I would just, the weekends were like my favorite time ever because I could sleep in, didn't have to worry about anything. So the fact that I was getting up at six 30 or seven every single day, like on the dot almost like it was just right in between there was bizarre. And it was awesome though, because I would just wake up and I'd be like ready to go where now I wake up. I toss and turn for a while. I get on my phone. I play June's Journey. Like, I just kind of fuck off for a while, you know? So that was definitely an interesting one. Being bloated was definitely something that I experienced in the first trimester. It's kind of stopped now. But in the first trimester, I just, I was bloated, like, all the time. And now it seems to be more so, like, right after I eat, even though I'm not eating a giant meal, I'll just be like bloated. Like I'll feel just so like distended and like just blah, you know? So these next two symptoms, I feel like kind of go hand in hand with not drinking enough water, but I would have headaches and constipation kind of like sporadically. And I don't recall if they were at the same time as one another, but I wouldn't be surprised because I most likely was having a headache it was like a hangover type headache because I feel like I was most likely having a headache because I wasn't drinking enough water and I probably was constipated because I also wasn't drinking enough water. So I try and drink as much water as possible, which is easier um, now because I'm not drinking, you know, I'm not drinking alcohol, I'm not drinking wine, I'm not drinking beer. So it's been easier to drink a lot of water and I'm pretty good about it, but I feel like a few of those days, like I was just out and about or just, just forgetting to drink water. So drink your water for sure. If you're pregnant, I need to get my hair done so bad. Like my roots are crazy. I need to get that them done real bad. So this one, I feel like almost everyone experiences when they're pregnant, um, being extra emotional, like kind of moody. I kind of am a moody person anyways, but it's been kind of exasperated. Is that exasperated? Is that what I'm meaning to say? I think so. Uh, it's been exacerbated. That's what I'm trying to say <laughs> throughout pregnancy. Like I'll just have these random mood swings where I'll be super happy. And then one thing will just like kind of set me over the edge. And then I'm just like kind of in a pissy mood and I have to like get myself out of it. Uh, poor Nick. So <laughs> I've been working on that, but definitely extra emotional, maybe even more emotional about certain things. Like especially movies with like families in it. Like, I don't know if it's because I am pregnant, I'm gonna be a mom soon-ish. Like it's just so, it, it hits differently, I feel like. Like I, I don't know, like I watched one movie where this mom like lost her child and obviously that's very sad, but it just hit me in a different way than it normally would have and I was just, bawling my eyes out like I probably would have cried anyways because it's terrible but like it just feels different now that I'm going to be a mother and yeah it was just it, I don't know just all feels extra emotional I'm like so running out of breath <sighs> uh bleeding gums has been something that I was experiencing I know that I've read online that there's just like I don't know exactly what it is but Something with your gums, like you need to take extra good care of them when you're pregnant because you can have some issues, definitely some um, bleeding gums. And stuffy nose has been something that I've also noticed a little bit of, and I don't know the exact reasoning for that. I did read it, but I forgot. But definitely have been experiencing a bit of that, so I've been taking extra good care of my teeth. I'm kind of one of those people that like, 
I don't go to sleep with, I can't go to sleep with makeup on and I can't go to sleep without brushing my teeth. So I'm really religious about brushing my teeth, but I wasn't super amazing at flossing. Like I wouldn't do it every single day. So I did get those like little flosser things that like make it easier. And now I'm like pretty much flossing like at least once a day, which has been really good. This is a big one for me. So I would say all, almost all of the first trimester and a little bit into the second trimester, I've just been feeling like unmotivated. It's just been kind of a different thing for me because I'm a very motivated person. So like experiencing just not being motivated to do things has just been odd and like unusual for me. So I feel like you just need to let yourself kind of lean into that and just let yourself chill on the couch if you want to, you know, you're not lazy. You're like building a human being inside your body. Like that takes a lot of nutrients, time, effort. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's not something to be taken lightly. It's kind of amazing what our bodies can do. Not kind of amazing. It's freaking amazing. So the fact that like you're creating a human life inside you right now, like give yourself some grace and like chill and like just relax. Honestly, that's what I, kind of what I want to do right now is just go sit on the couch and watch TV. But yeah, so just being kind of unmotivated to do things like whether it was just like something I needed to do an errand. I feel like I would just put things off and put things off and just felt unmotivated to do them. And typically I'm the type of person that I'm very motivated, like whatever I want to do, I try to get done. I like do lists. I have tons of lists. I make lists in the morning about what I'm going to do that day, my grocery list, what I'm doing tomorrow, what I need to do for the week. So I'm a very big list person and I just felt so unmotivated to do so many different things. I was just kind of like, I didn't want to like leave the house. Like not like I was depressed. I was just like, I was just unmotivated. Like I just wanted to sit and watch TV, but that didn't feel good because I would beat myself up a little bit. And then I would have to remind myself like, whoa, 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 you're building a human. Like you're creating human life inside your body right now. Like you deserve to just relax if that's what you want to do. Okay. So, um, I just went to the bathroom and went number two. Very excited for myself on that one. <laughs> that's the second time today. Woo. Okay, uh, back to this. So I had some veins going on in my boobs um, and my nipples have gotten bigger. So it's been like a little more veiny over here. Um, and I feel like I was experiencing that like pretty early on. So I kept trying to like remember, I'm like, is this just leftover from the first pregnancy or like, is this this one? Um, but yeah, I'm definitely noticing them more, more so on my right side than my left, but yeah, veins nonetheless. Weight gain. Okay. So I, I would say around 15 weeks, um, I've read on the interwebs that I haven't actually even spoken to my doctor yet. So that's interesting. Um, I think in the next week I'm going to meet her, but I read online that around 15 weeks, you will probably have gained five to 10 pounds. So I weighed myself in the very beginning of my pregnancy and I weighed myself at around 15 weeks in the morning without clothes on because they do it at the doctor's office and it's like 4 p.m. in the day and I have all my clothes on and shoes and I'm like, excuse me, that is not what I weigh. <laughs> so I did gain five pounds in my first trimester and actually a couple weeks over. And so I was pretty happy about that because with the remodel going on, it's been difficult to try to make healthy choices because I just get busy and hungry and like wanna grab something that's quick and easy and cooking has been extremely difficult with no kitchen and like it's just been challenging. <laughs> so I was pretty stoked that I ha was on like the lower end of that. So I guess we'll see how it goes after Thanksgiving because I definitely did not hold back. Symptoms that I haven't been experiencing, um, I have not really had any cravings for anything specific. I kind of expected pregnancy to come with, um, you know, just like a slew of now I like sweets or now I don't like avocados, you know, things like that because people talk about it all the time, but I haven't experienced anything like that. I've always been the type of person that like just has a weird collection of food on my plate. Like if I'm home alone and I'm just eating whatever, like I'll have like a pickle and a piece of cheese and like, you know, just whatever. And I just, it's just kind of a weird mishmash of things, but there hasn't been anything that I've been eating more of. There hasn't been anything that I've been craving necessarily. Like I just still like to eat all the same stuff that I eat. 
Um, I love salty stuff. I love potatoes. I love cheese. So unfortunately, I wish that my favorite thing was salad and, you know, steamed broccoli, but that's just not real life. So I've been trying to force myself to eat those things though, because I'm making a human being and I want them to be as healthy as possible. So I've also had no morning sickness at all, um, which has been really great. I have heard that people have had really bad nausea and that's just not great. <laughs> so I've been really lucky to not have any nausea, no throwing up, nothing of the sort. So that's been awesome. So um, I have not been able to feel any movement yet. I did notice when I was laying down one day like a lemon sized like lump on my right side and it eventually disappeared, but I am guessing that was the baby over here, but I have not felt any movement. My belly hasn't even really popped yet. Like I just kind of look a little bloated maybe. So I'm just kind of waiting for that moment because I don't really fit in any of my clothing right now, but I also don't have like a pregnant belly. So I'm not super comfortable wearing like tight clothing. So I'm kind of like in this weird in between and I really need to go shopping because honestly, I haven't even purchased a bra since my second breast augmentation, April 1st. So I don't even know what size bra I am right now. And that's why I'm wearing PJs because like I don't fit in anything. Like I just, I don't, I don't know what to wear. Like getting dressed to go out right now is just like not fun. It's like not fun at all. <laughs> I wanted to talk about some things that I've been using and used for my first trimester and I am continuing to use. So one thing that kind of has started to happen, um, I guess I could have talked about this as a symptom, but kind of at the end of my first trimester, my boobs and my stomach have started itching because they're growing. So I got these two things. This is belly oil from Amazon. I've almost used this entire thing and I've been preemptively using this like before I was even pregnant. I started putting this on my thighs, my butt, my stomach and my boobs so that I could hydrate and make my skin as elastic as possible. So uh, as to avoid stretch marks if possible. And then this is from Summer Fridays. It's called Baby Moon Belly Balm. This basically just melts, melts into your skin and is the same thing that this is. And it helps prevent um, stretch marks, even postpartum, and helps your skin become more elastic. So these have been awesome. I also ordered some pants from Pink Blush Maternity and I wear them so often that they're actually in the wash right now, conveniently enough. So I can't show them to you, but the band is like this thick on them and they're long and they go up over your stomach. So you don't feel like, like my leggings right now just cut into me right here. And it's like one of the most uncomfortable things ever. So I need like leggings that are two sizes up at the moment. Cause I'm just like bigger, but I'm, I don't have like a belly yet. So um, those have been awesome. I also wanna say that their return policy is rad. Like when you return something, they don't charge you to send it back. It doesn't matter why you're sending it back. And they also don't charge you postage and they don't charge you for an exchange for a newer size. So I did wanna mention that. I've been pretty happy. I placed an order and had to exchange some things. But those pants that I got have been awesome. I wish I could show them to you. I'll link them for you down below. But very, very comfortable. I wish I had about 10 pairs because I'm kind of living in them at the moment. They're very long too. So if you're short, I'm five and a half, or five, eight and a half, not five and a half, five, eight and a half. Um, and I, they're long on me. So if you're short, you might need to hem them or cut them or something, but so freaking comfortable. You know what symptom I didn't talk about is memory. My memory has been just kind of like a little off and saying things I like don't say them properly and my nighttime vision during driving has been a little weird too. I forgot to mention those because I didn't write them down. But just remember those. Like I guess that's a thing. Like when my friend said that her like when she drives at night she almost feels like hungover or like a little buzzed or something like her eyesight and I can totally relate because I am now the DD and I'm like what's up with my eyesight like trying to like clear my eyes like it's I just feel like tired maybe it's just because I'm tired I don't know but oh the other thing that I have been using is a fetal doppler I didn't know this even existed until the person who let me borrow this told me about it and let me borrow it I also purchased my own 
because she was telling me about it and I was like, oh, I need to get my hands on this immediately. And then she let me borrow it. So this basically is uh, so you can hear your baby's heartbeat. And she told me that she was not able to use this every single time to find the baby's heartbeat because sometimes the baby would be behind her placenta and was for most of her pregnancy. So sometimes she wasn't able to find it. When you use this, you put like aloe or like the gel that it comes with on your stomach. And I found that it is very low. The baby's like right, like right where my pubic hair stops, it's right there. So um, this has been really cool though, because going through a miscarriage, it's been like concerning and my appointments, I only have one a month right now. So I've been doing this and hearing the baby's heartbeat and it's a very fast heartbeat. So don't confuse it with your own. It almost sounds like a dog panting. So this has been really cool. I thought I was going to be a little bit of a psycho with this and like listen to this multiple times a day, but I'll usually do it once a day or every other day. And Nick has actually helped me find the heartbeat every now and then when I can't find it. But the baby also moves around a lot. This baby moves a ton. So I'll find it and hold it there. And then two seconds later, it's gone and I have to like find it again. So this is really cool. It's cool for peace of mind, but also know that you're not going to find the baby's heartbeat every single time necessarily, um, unless you're lucky. But that can cause a little bit of concern, I guess, as well. So just know that when you go to use this. If you guys have any recommendations for like items or clothing or bathing suits or oils or literally anything to do with pregnancy and maternity, like please drop it below. I'd love to hear because like I said, I really haven't purchased a whole lot. I've just been really busy. So whatever you guys recommend, I'm totally down to scope out and I'm sure there's some other expecting moms reading uh, the comments as well that would love to hear your suggestions. Actually, I know there's a lot of you because you've commented, oh, I'm 16 weeks pregnant, oh, I'm 12 weeks pregnant. So I know you're there and I think we would all really appreciate it. So if you have anything that you couldn't live without or that you highly recommend, um, please let us know. I would love to read. Um, also, if you have any pregnancy content that you've seen on other channels that you'd love to see here, I would love and welcome the ideas. I think it would be great. And baby bump pics will be coming soon when there is a baby bump to speak of, like I'm just thicker. Like the where's, there's no, like it just hasn't appeared yet. So I feel like one day it'll just pop up and I'll be like, what is that? <laughs> so uh, we'll see, but we will see you in the next video guys. I'm excited to do another video on baby content. So whatever you wanna see, let me know. We'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.